Hello. Hello. Welcome, welcome. I hope everyone had a great summer. Give folks just a moment to join before we get started. I'll just say uh, welcome. This is the SIG observability um, uh, first meeting of the fall after taking August off, uh, as many people were on holiday and KubeCon happened. Um, I'll remind everyone, as we're supposed to do, that this is a CNCF uh, event and the uh, code of conduct applies, obviously. So uh, please, uh, it's never been an issue before, but uh, it's always worth saying. Um, uh, bear that in mind uh, with any content in chat. And, and talking. Is Richard here as well? He was he dropped. He'll be back. Cool. Um, I'll put the document in chat. Uh, please uh, do sign in. And if there are any um, additional agenda items, um, I think we still probably have some time. <clears throat> Hey, there you are, Richard. Yep, sorry. I, for whatever reason, Zoom keeps crashing. I joined the browser. Ah. So you should be able to hear me. Okay. Um, yeah. Test, test, test. Yep. Okay. Fun, fun, fun. Yeah, I heard you do the intros, but I couldn't see anything, and then, then Zoom just started crashing on me. Whatever. Uh, just FYI, I have a clash for the last, uh, like, in 30 minutes, I need to join a different call, unfortunately. Um, yeah. So let's walk through the agenda. We didn't have any TOC updates, um, obviously, of course, we didn't have any any um, any calls in August, but what happened is um, the TOC voted on both Cortex and Thanos and actually um, finished voting, and so both are now incubating projects um, as of KubeCon. KubeCon was used as the uh, announcement slot for both of those, uh, and that's basically it for TOC. Um, there was one other update. I spoke with Amy today. Um, it looks like we have 11 binding votes on the election for our tech lead. Uh, so uh, someone on the call uh, mm -hmm. deserves a, a, a round of a welcome and, and congratulations and all of that. Um, uh, I believe they should be putting out some communication in a bit. I know that um, uh, there's one TOC member uh, who uh, is, is uh, going to be leaving the TOC for, for, for reasons um, of a personal nature. Uh, um, but uh, I think with 11 binding votes, we, we could probably say that it's, <laughs> it's done. Uh, so congratulations, uh, Larka. Yeah, thanks, thanks. But let's 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 uh, wait for official blog posts and think. But yeah, super yeah. happy with that. Cool. So I can I can start with with next topic straight away. Yes, um, we have like just want to kind of get um, 
uh, get back um, in kind of the major thing we did like uh, before the break in August, we are talking about analytics APIs for observability signals. And we started with like Prometheus and how to get um, some analytic use cases on top of that. So there didn't, I mean, nothing major changed um, since then. However, we took some action on the Red Hat side and we started the um, short like POC project for um, a certain APIs and like the, the report is called Obsletics on the Thanos community. Please join us and, and contribute. The idea is to have um, just, just a proxy that will um, essentially understand the Prometheus and Thanos um, export APIs, which is remote read and store API. They are really, really similar. And it will expose a certain app analytic APIs. And right now we focus on parquet file and we also want to for you want to add an uh, Apache Arrow flight, which is a gRPC um, endpoint. So this is the plan, but we essentially it won't be you know super efficient from the start, but um, it will do the work and enable folks to to just uh, use metric data much more efficiently in those systems. So if you want to have uh, I don't know if you want to add another endpoint to 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 you know support maybe other observability signals or uh, add any analytic apis yeah feel feel free to propose that in the github issue on the pr so we can we can look on that and at the same time uh, kind of reminder we are um, going through use cases um, and this is the doc like the seek observability data analytic use cases high level use cases, what else we can do in our community, in our uh, projects in terms of what is missing essentially uh, for analytic use cases. So I think we can get back to this at some point for the next meeting, uh, but please, um, yeah, let's reread this uh, on its own time and, and add if anything is missing. I think we are in the middle of this doc or something. Um, so from the next meeting, we can, we can uh, continue that. So I think that's a status that was happening on our side. The, anyone has any questions? I think one question is where do you target this API initially in long term? Like where do you want to implement this first and where should it live long term? You mean the obsletics thingy? Yeah. Uh, I mean, where do I want to implement the CPI? It's essentially a, um, just a proxy, just a glue between um, um, something that will share an endpoint of Apache Flight, for example, or it will just a bad job that will transform uh, whatever data you want into parquet file. So this is kind of two modes that we are aiming for. One is a bad job and one is like, um, yeah, service, stateless service that will transform the data from one format to another, hopefully without not much overhead. So that's the plan, um, current plan. Right. Uh, point of order, there is currently someone trying to join. Um, it's, uh, given that I'm not locked into the session, I can't let anyone in. Uh, I think, Matt, you should be seeing a, a thing. Yeah, I'm, looking, trying I'm, to I'm, not, I'm not seeing an admit. I'm actually not the owner of the meeting in Zoom land. Um, maybe in the future, I, I can be. Um, is it, who's actually host? Yeah, I'm not a host or a co-host. Shit. Is it QNCF that on Zoom? No, no, no. <laughs> That's me. Uh, and I cannot, uh, yeah, I don't have admin rights. And uh, I, I don't well, know exactly you, can try it. you just need to log in, right? Um, so maybe he's using wrong link. Yeah, I know. Sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll put the link in the doc for him. Sorry for that. Ah, wait, 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 wait. Um, maybe they are not locked into. Uh, 
Yeah. Yeah, uh, it might be the security thing to avoid Zoom bombing where you have to be authenticated somehow. Yeah, that most likely. I was also forced to log in into my browser uh, before, like within the browser, I was forced to log into Zoom again before being allowed to join. So I wrote this into the into the uh, meeting notes. Hopefully, hopefully they work. Sorry for the interruption. Yeah, I think okay, we finished the analytics one. Uh, let's get back to some of the next. Uh, next discussion. So, so next just, one, just so we're just so we're clear. Yeah. Sorry, with all the all the hullabaloo, I I, I missed the question from me. Um, uh, is is the idea here that that this is something this is an API that you're implementing in in Thanos to to help export observability data, or is that just expedient to create it there? And we really think that this is something that would live, um, that would use either you know, you know some that would work on, on Prometheus itself versus something that requires Thanos? No, no, no. So this is um, this is only, well, we needed that for the Thanos community, but because Thanos has really similar API to Prometheus, just gRPC, mm -hmm. this is also working against against Thanos, right? And for now, like with everything else, like we we talked um, about use cases and you know what APIs are the most important, but we actually have a real use cases on inside Red Hat to use uh, observability data for parquet, uh, well, for something that consume parquet files. So we went ahead and create this helper. And this, will, and this is actually a good first step because then if we see that there is like super high usage of it and, and, very, um, and maybe there are some blockers or something that needs enhancement, then it will be a good step to, to forward discussion on, you know, maybe Prometheus should have that by default on, on, on their side. So, you know, this is actually some some actionable thing that we chosen to do. So, um, cool. yeah, market file is, is first step, but yeah, everyone is welcome to add their own, um, just to have something working for a start. Yeah. Yep. Uh, just one follow up question to that: Can this also be used uh, to export? So you you are taking data from a remote read. Can one of the exporters be a remote write, and that could be also a tool to transfer uh, data between various systems? But that's the thing, like we are at least for for let's say, and that's a good point. Like, what's the scope of this of this tool? This tool, um, we want to make sure that you can use the data that are already ingested by Prometheus, Thanos, or even Cortex, like can, 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 can easily export this API. Um, we want to make sure that you can use this analytic systems like, uh, um, you know, anything kind of all up related like the parquet file, um, anything that comes in parquet file, Apache Arrow, things like that. Um, so even like Python notebooks, Jupyter, things like that all of them can consume and work on this data while still have data uh, in the same place. Because remote write is all about replication. And well, you, there are already, already tools that kind of allows replicating in different databases, um, but we want to kind of allow using the data that already are consumed and stored in one place and try to avoid replicating them in many thousands of you know other locations that are maybe uh, you know, have different APIs. That's why this is like a helper for like a pooling method, like pooling only the data that you want for, for analytic purposes. Um, that's why remote write uh, doesn't fit here. Yeah. But you can you can totally do, do this, um, do, um, you know, have Prometheus and have remote write and push the data and replicate all you need for analytic use cases to some analytic backend. Uh, but you know, that's totally a separate story, I guess. But def definitely doable, yeah. Awesome, any other thought, question? Uh, no, I hope to have some better updates in a couple of weeks uh, within our own team uh, about Two weeks ago, uh, we started working on some of the scenarios that are captured in the doc that we had talked about before around machine learning and model training. Um, 
uh, and and we've since deployed Cortex in our case, uh, and we're looking at various ways to do the same. So I'll we'll have a look at the, what you've posted from the Thanos community and um, yeah, um, definitely. hope to have some more concrete results uh, in a couple of weeks. But it's it's been interesting to see a team that's used to having to ingest data and then build an entire database just to hold things, and they're 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 looking at Prometheus and the data model for the first time, and and they're finding that they might be able to prune a lot of work just to do the how Prometheus is already so optimized for time series data. So results so far are positive, but we still have this core need to be able to bulk bulk read uh, historical data. Exactly, and the main blocker is that Prometheus remote read and those even remote write APIs are very hidden. There's no much documentation for it. So if we enable such kind of show how easy it is, um, this will enable lots of people to, to stop you know, writing their own tools from scratch and, and having and just reusing the, 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 the data that is available in Prometheus site. And uh, for particular your use case, like make sure to also poke Cortex to enable remote read or we can talk how to do it internally because the data model we have really this, have the same. So it would be amazing if we can reuse exactly the same the same tool. And uh, yeah, we'll be up for that for sure. Awesome. Right. Great. Uh, on the next one, who 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 uh, who had put in the growing the observability community with CNCG? Uh, hi, Matt. I'm Piyush, uh, and I work primarily as a DevOps engineer with Dream11 here in India. Hello. Uh, and hi. Uh, and uh, I've been trying to build a CNCF community around here. And uh, as I'm a big uh, follower of observability myself, I have been looking for ways in which I can contribute back to the community. And there are a few things that I uh, observed during the KubeCon as well as uh, with the new platform that we have put in place for hosting CNCF communities. Just for everyone's update and context, uh, uh, CNCF is moving away from meetups and uh, uh, is planning on self-hosting uh, the entire community platform along with Bevy. Um, and that's what the concept of cloud native community group is. So uh, the first suggestion that I had was uh, like, so with CNCG, the first thing that we have is, uh, we have uh, divided the whole community into different chapters according to locations right now, right? And that's just a horizontal distribution across the globe. Uh, I was hoping maybe we could have a vertical chapter sort of for observability. And uh, uh, with maybe you can add sub chapters onto it. So basically if you add a single event to a sing, um, let's say a parent chapter, it shows up in all your sub chapters, right? So uh, if we could have a vertical chapter around there and uh, then we can uh, you know, make all of these location sub chapters as uh, lo location chapters as sub chapters of that, uh, we could have a larger community who can be you know, engaged in a single event, in a single observability event. And uh, like, uh, I was really hoping that uh, we could engage the community better in this way. Uh, the second thing that I had was uh, we have a bunch of keynotes that are available for free for everyone uh, within the community itself. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Uh, within the community itself and as for KubeCon itself, we had uh, keynote passes and everything. So. Uh, it might be a good idea if we could uh, have these keynotes uh, available on that community channel itself, because that makes uh, engaging the people working with the community uh, within the community chapter itself. Um, the third thing that I had was, uh, uh, it's just a general suggestion that we post these videos or uh, these talks or any useful links that we have resources within that community itself. And you can do a bunch of different things. Yeah, you can have uh, newsletters and everything over there uh, within the single chapter. So people generally have a common place where they want to talk to uh, everyone interested in observability, right? And they can have better resources around there. And the last thing that I had was uh, uh, basically, uh, so uh, what I found when I was trying to contribute to the observability community and SIG is uh, we don't have a lot of documentation at the moment around it, right? 
and it might really be a good idea to have a, uh, some sort of documentation so that uh, people know how they can contribute to the observability community on a broader scale and not just for project specific like c contributing to the community as a whole okay so yeah these are just a few things that i wanted to bounce off everyone and uh, yeah please anything that i can help out with Great, thank, thanks for um, thanks for for covering that. Um, I put a couple links in the meeting document uh, in terms of the this the videos from the from our SIG meetings uh, now and moving forward. The CNCF records uh, and posts all the the videos in a playlist under the CNCF YouTube channel. So um, uh, if there are are uh, community groups uh, or or other places you want to link to, that that would be the authoritative source at least from the, the SIG mechanisms. Um, in addition, uh, for some of the documents that we review moving forward, um, I had hoped to have the link from Amy today. I'm told it's been provisioned, but we have a, a Google Drive as well uh, for Google documents moving forward um, that we can have for SIG observabilities uh, use. Um, I must confess that I had somehow missed the blog on the community groups, uh, so I'm, I'm not an authority or anything. Um, does, does anyone else have uh, feedback or I think we also talked about some entry point uh, for for like observability topics so that 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 once finished we can we can definitely point to that um, and my question overall to the overall thing like it's not amazing but what's actually actionable um, is here from 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 this uh, sick. Uh, should we sign up for for something? Should we announce the keynotes or availability for keynotes? Look for presenters. How we can help, essentially. Uh, so what I was essentially looking for is the current limitation that we have on community groups is their location based, right? So you of uh, you have uh, SIGs for local chapters, but you don't have them on a broader level. So let's say, for instance, if you are in Mumbai, right? Uh, you wouldn't probably join some chapter in New York or San Francisco unless or until uh, you have some very special interest there, right? Or you won't have visibility onto it. That's the primary point, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So if we could have a chapter that connects to a pe to people based on the type of interest they have rather than the location, right? That brings the whole observability community together in that sense, right? Uh, second thing that it could be a very good place to start for everyone because uh, like uh, the general trend that I've seen um, at least with the startups in India is with uh, the entire COVID pan uh, pandemic hitting and everything, right? Everyone is just trying to save cloud costs at the moment, right? They're trying to cut down on costs uh, whichever way they can. Uh, and one area in which they lack the efforts or uh, they don't have a good starting point or something is observability. So it is predominantly uh, our uh, partners that we have Neural Lake and Datadog and everyone, right? But uh, they still don't have uh, enough community around it. They don't have enough contact around. So they can uh, work with open telemetry or other tools like that, right? They, they don't have, they just don't have that at the moment. So uh, having a broader community might also help with that. Sounds good. Uh, did you, I mean, uh, what other SIG groups are, are thinking about that? I mean, um, did you? I, did... I haven't talked to, uh, I haven't uh, attended any other meetings as such, and I'm not really sure about that. Actually, observability is an area that intrigues me a lot, and mm -hmm. uh, I have been looking towards it for the past couple of years, so uh, that's why I figured it might be a good place to start. Yeah. Uh, so, but you said it's a limitation of the platform, right? Or... Uh, no, no, no. So the limitation is currently the way we have structured it. Yeah. So that puts a limitation because uh, it is currently location based and not interest based. Uh, please, if anyone has any questions, anything that I can help out. Then. Yeah, I think. Um... Oh, no, um, I think as, as we said, it might be helpful if, if what was 
being asked for or what the actionable next steps were captured uh, either in a document or, or ideally in a GitHub issue uh, right. in the SIG observability uh, GitHub repo. Uh, sure. And then we can, um, you know, then as a community, we can have some, some feedback. I think, I think many of the things um, uh, that you're mentioning, um, we do have uh, some coverage for in the SIG itself and, and the SIG exists to, to, to help with many of those goals. So, sure. um, No, but, but what, what you said uh, essentially in the platform makes sense also. Like we, mm -hmm. I think we can, I don't know if you're asking for this, but um, looks like you are looking for some people who will organize those groups, those meetups across, across all the locations right around observability uh, if if i can get any help with that that would be great but uh, even if not like uh, at least we got to start somewhere so yeah exactly we can definitely help with that we can we can uh, just announce it and find you know maybe some topics and um and speakers because kind of right. that's that's what matters yeah we would love yeah, to exactly. but regarding yeah. so definitely let's 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 uh, cover this action item yeah yeah, and, and in terms of, you know, the, the, I don't want to say parochial, but the, lo the, the local aspect of it, you know, like, um, I think time zone makes sense, but at least in, at least in North America or for some outside North America too, you know, um, with the current state of, of affairs, um, you know, I, I'm not sure what, what, it, what it means necessarily in practice, because at least, you know, most of the local meetups and such like, that are in person aren't, aren't at right. least aren't happening uh, until things. So uh, Bevy provides just that. Uh, initially, that was being held over Zoom. Um, some of the mm -hmm. virtual meetups that were going around, they, okay. they were being held over Zoom and uh, others. But Bevy provides just that. Great. Um, is there anything else on this topic, or should we move along? Um, I don't think I have anything else. Anyone? Um, is there anything that you can help out with? Okay, um, I think Ganesh, uh, extending prompt to all with OK over time. Yep, hi everyone, I'm Ganesh. So I'm currently working on uh, extending prompt QL, starting with a very specific case of uh, extending the current top K function. So before I talk about what it is, let me explain what the current problem is. Uh, so uh, Prometheus just allows a query and a query range, and query range is just a syntactic sugar or query where it runs the same query or multiple timestamps and returns individual results for those individual timestamps. So if you run a top K query in the query range, uh, and if you have a top K of, uh, let's say phi, you, it's possible you get much more than phi time series as a result for the query range, because at every evaluation, uh, there might be different time series, but uh, the use case that I'm so uh, trying to solve is you might want to look at uh, some aggregation over the past few hours or past some time and just pick uh, top few metrics, let's say five metrics out of all those aggregations and just plot five metrics for that entire range instead of getting thousands of metrics for every evaluation timestamp. Currently, that's not easily soluble with current PromQL or current APIs. Uh, because in the query range, you cannot use the start and end or other parameters of the query range and PromQL doesn't allow any such uh, extensions. So currently I'm trying to solve this particular problem. I'm currently working on a design doc and exploring different paths to solve the two directions that are possible are extending the PromQL itself, which uh, sounds more promising, which might even solve more problems than just ex extending top K. And the other option is uh, introducing a new API, which doesn't have restrictions like the query range currently, but that's uh, not so good solution when it comes to extending from QL. So currently I'm focusing on extending from QL. So if anyone has more ideas on how you want to extend from QL and more use cases, uh, you can uh, reach me out on Slack. My name is Ganesh Varnikar. Other than that, I don't have much to share in terms of solutions. I just wanted to put a point that I'm looking at extending from QL and would like some inputs if you have.
Um, should we open some issue just on, on Prometheus just to cover some ideas as well, maybe? Uh, and just to maybe attract people to, 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 to put their ideas there, maybe tweet about that. Um, yeah. So you are not yeah, pumped with messages. Yeah, so I just started uh, working on this thing yesterday. So that's the plan. I will be opening a GitHub issue and uh, maybe different issues for specific use cases to uh, divide the conversation. Because this is like very kind of controversial topic. Like we usually yeah, didn't allow to ex extend of extensions of PromQL. But I think it's super great idea that we at some point um, want to move this restriction. And uh, yes, please help Ganesh to, to gather more essentially requirements for the potential solution here. Yep, requirements are the main things. And, and also if you are also, I don't know, kind of confused with the top K or you are particularly um, not happy with this, also reach, reach Ganesh and, and this issue, I guess, just to give your opinion. Since we are fixing it, that's a good moment to give your feedback. <laughs> yeah. So I, I want to be, be careful though, that, um, you know, this really is something for the Prometheus community to um, provide feedback on and has governance over in terms of, of PromQL, but we can certainly surface it here as a, a call for, for you know, if anybody else is interested in it or, 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 or such, so thank you for bringing it yeah. um, to the city. There's no other feedback or comments on this one. Um, let's move on. Um, the next one's mine. I actually could do this in about 30 seconds. It's really just an ask. Um, I put some details there, but uh, we had talked uh, back in June or July um, uh, and in, in some of the charter discussions around, uh, you know, providing something from the SIG that a new developer that's new to the open source um, space or new to the CNCF stack uh, could have quickly working on a, you know, in a, in a local scenario um, or in a small cluster scenario, just to, uh, if it were uh, Kubernetes hosted, uh, just to, to have a starting point. So um, I'll create a GitHub issue uh, to track this, but uh, I wanted to surface it here. I, I have found some various Docker Compose things. Um, uh, some of the folks at Weaveworks have have some of this as well. Uh, so, but before diving in and making a net new thing, or um, you know, if there's prior art or if, if folks have found other things of this type useful, um, please feel free to either put them in the doc and I'll roll it into a GitHub issue. Uh, Yeah, have you have you seen much the Katakoda tutorials? I'm sure the what? Katakoda tutorial platform, uh, like I haven't in, actually in the doc. So this is like particular course for Thanos we are working on, and this is a platform that literally gives you opportunity to just play around those things and play, you know, kind of um, just run the tutorials across different um, components. Like right now it's about Thanos, but you can actually, there are already tutorials about Kubernetes, Prometheus, other projects, and uh, it's essentially works in our browser. So maybe this is what we want to use. It's, it's kind of, you know, open, oh, well, free to use for open source projects. Um, cool. So it's kind of much, much more ready than, than just uh, trying to set up the, yeah, the airport, uh, sorry, airport, airplane laptop mode or something like that. So anyway, I will add that to, to other issue. Oh, yeah, and I have, um, I've, I've found, uh, again, some like Docker Compose files that have been particularly useful that are a good starting point that, that have, you know, a bunch of these tools put together, but uh, it's a bit of a patchwork now. So I was curious if having something a little more curated by the SIG for new contributors to the space might make sense. So maybe we could do this on one of these other platforms or, um, yeah, I don't want to take up too much time though. Uh, if there's no other feedback it is. I think that I, I, I want to add something. Mm. Uh, I am Sergio, I am from Guatemala. Here in Guatemala, we are, I am working with my students in the operating system course. So I want to integrate some things about observability 
Uh, I have uh, some repo that I can share with you, or maybe I can help in your goal to create some kind of small projects or examples to use Docker Compose and that things. I think that maybe I can join forces with you <laughs> with the six. So I, I think that I can share here the, my repo. It's, it's like a kind of, well, I am trying to create some space for the students in the CNCF ecosystem. So that's my main idea. Um, I tried to add some kind of examples there that I have some examples to implement Jagger in an easy way. Um, right now we are trying to experiment using Linkerd, but in complement using Jagger, I can compare and optimize uh, a kind of project for my students. So maybe I can help with that. I have some experience with creating Katakoda scenarios. So maybe I can help in that way. Yeah, that's that's great. Um, on the linker D subject, that's what um, my team runs in production as well. Uh, and we're actually, we're finding that it, it's great to onboard people to CNCF observability stack um, in general, because the, the Linkerd proxies can generate trace headers, uh, as well as uh, time series metrics um, in Prometheus format. So for example, on the, on the tracing side, even for services that do not integrate yet with a, a tracing library that emits B3 headers, uh, we can still kind of have bookends uh, for, for, for them uh, that, can, that can go into an overall observability uh, story for a, a, a whole series of um, interconnected microservices. Um, yeah, yeah, I have some examples using the open telemetry library too. So oh, cool. I can integrate that. I, I am trying to create some very simple examples for the students because it's really hard for, for them because it's a new technology and it's like totally, wow, what is, what is this thing? And yeah, I think that I can help in that way. Great, thanks. Um, so uh, I guess the, the last thing um, I, we had on the agenda was just update your discussion regarding existing tasks that are already as, marked as issues. Uh, I don't wanna do necessarily an issue walk because um, that might be a little tortured, but if, is there anything folks wanted to discuss that they're working on or that they want to propose or that they wanna just uh, uh, get, some, get some visibility on from the SIG? Hey, this is actually related to the previous uh, question. Um, we have a brand new tool. It's not out of beta yet, but it's a CLI tool to actually bring up Grafana, Prometheus, etc. And it comes with a Helm chart as well. I'll, I'll post it on here. It's called TOBS, and right now it integrates uh, TimescareDB as the backend tool, but we welcome contributions from other backends as well. Uh, so kind of related to both of these topics. Oh, that's great. Yes, please do, uh, please do link it, and I'm um, happy to have a look. Uh, uh, that's great. Maybe I can say something. I'm not sure if everybody knows each other here. Um, it's the first time I'm joining uh, the meeting. Simone is talking. So I'm actually on behalf of Ericsson here. Uh, um, Welcome. Thanks. <laughs> thanks, Matt. We're, we're, the SIG is quite new, actually. I think we're all still yeah. getting to know each other. So uh, you're in good company. Yeah, I noticed the, yeah. So I'm working in the area of troubleshooting and observability. Um, we are going through, well, if you have been reading the news with all the ideas in 5G, so we are going through a major transformation in, the, in how we build these networks. And I work in the run, in the radio access part. So we are basically changing how we build the system and how the deployments are going to look like in the future as well. So the, the let's say the 5G is not going to be the usual 
operator idea that we have with these antennas and masts outside, it can, they are going to be much more like smaller and complex. And one part of building these systems is in the troubleshooting and observability area. So we are moving from a more system softer um, type of tracing observability idea to a cloud native. And one of the ideas that I was trying to bring here or discuss more, it was also in the in terms of um, white papers and also having bringing this this discussion in terms of the 5G also to this big. I'm not sure. I, I had the impression that you guys are more focused on the tools and some things that you are building and improving right now. I would say that maybe I'm in my daily life, I'm like you, but seeing here, I probably a layer above, maybe trying to get a bigger picture and trying to how we promote this, the observability in different areas and for different purposes as well. That's not only um, that people don't only think about um, yeah, certain use cases that are associated with observability right now. Um, that's great. Actually, that's uh, I'm putting a link in the chat to the charter that we recently settled on a, a few months ago. Um, and, and scenarios like that are specifically in scope for this SIG. Uh, you know, how people are using observability tools and data uh, methods on, on how to, to leverage them and how to make them actionable or useful for various domains and verticals, that's all That's all in scope. Um, and so we have a lot of latitude as a SIG about how we spend time and, and what we might want to either welcome members to have uh, talks or webinars and orchestrate that, uh, or to provide a forum to get feedback on, on, on ideas and or approaches in that space. So um, welcome to the mm -hmm. SIG and, and uh, we, we welcome all of, yeah, ha have a look at the charter, uh, but but no, that, that's, in, that's in scope, so. Okay, thanks. Uh, I think that's all we have on the agenda. Is there is there anything else folks want to discuss in the last minute or so, or should we return a bit of time to people's day? Well, I guess that's a wrap then. Um, happy September, everyone. And uh, I guess we'll see you all in two weeks. Yeah, see you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.